In this lesson, we discuss visibility queries. That is, given a viewpoint V, we want to know which part or which parts of a terrain of the surrounding that are visible from that point V. So if we look here, we can see that this is a very fairly simple problem. So we basically need to draw the direct line between two points to see if the point V would see a first point, for example, on the left, yes, it would, and the second one, no, because there's a mountain between V. Several applications in GIS that use terrains involve visibility queries. Uh, there are many examples. One of them is, for example, is the position of uh, telecommunication towers. So we want to make sure that at every position we have a direct line of sight to the telecommunication towers. Another one is if we have, if we want to plan, uh, if we want to plan a new road for scenic drive in a mountainous area, then we would like that people from that uh, road see only nice parts of the surrounding. So the idea is uh, we can pre-compute at every point if someone sees, for example, a uh, nuclear plant or if there's a lot of forest were cut, then we don't want people to see that. Third one would be the estimation of shadows. So when we estimate shadows, it's also visible, a visibility query. And a fourth one would be uh, solar potential. So solar potential, we want to know uh, where can should we put um, solar panels on the roof. So we want to know if we have uh, direct visibility from the sun. So in that case, the sun becomes our viewpoint and we want to know are there anything blocking my view from the sun to the uh, given uh, roof. We address in this lesson two fundamental problems related to visibility query. The first one is the line of sight. That is, given a viewpoint and another point Q, does V see Q and uh, does Q see V? Uh, so this is done basically by simply checking if the line segment VQ intersects the terrain. And the result would be either true or false. The second one is the view shed. So given the same viewpoint, now we want to know which parts of the surrounding terrains are visible. The result is a polygon, which is potentially disconnected, that shows the location and the extent of what is visible from V. Um, as you can see here, this polygon, this visibility, po visibility polygon, is usually uh, limited to a certain horizon or maximum uh, radius of visibility, which can be, for example, 5 to 10 kilometers. Usually we can't see much further than, 10, than 5 to 10 kilometers. First, let's look at what is being done in computer graphics, for example, in games, for rendering 3D scenes to a screen. A screen is a 2D raster that is filled with pixels. The method is shown here and is called ray casting. Uh, ray casting is conceptually simple, but usually computationally very expensive if we have a large scenes with many 3D objects. The idea is to cast a ray from the viewer, which is a camera here, through one pixel of the screen, and then to extend the ray until it hits an object. The value that is assigned to every pixel is not only the color of the object, like it would be the case here, but usually the is based on a complex computation, which is based on ray tracing, where we have the light that is being involved, the light, the bouncing of the light between different objects, the environment lighting, and so on. But let's say for the simple case, ray casting is simply shooting a ray and then assigning the color of the pixel to the color of the first object that is being hit. So if we want to render a scene, then we need to do this operation for every pixel that we see here. There are different ways to perform this. There are two that are explained in the handout. So the first one would be, the first one is called Z buffer. The idea is to project all 3D objects on the screen one by one. And then during the projection, we decide which object is the closer. So it means that when we're projecting something, we also calculate what is the distance between the viewpoint and the object. And then only the object, which is the closest, will be assigned to the value of the pixel. So we're not looking at any order of the objects. We're just taking all the objects and then projecting them to the screen. This is a very old metal that is, ver that is rarely used in practice because it can be computationally very slow. Another method is called depth sorting. Uh, depth sorting involves sorting all the objects in the scene from front to back. So it means that we will not draw on the screen uh, all the objects, but we will only attempt to draw the ones that we know are the closest and can be seen. 
how this sorting is being done can be pretty complex. It's also explained, uh, some ideas are explained in the handout, but usually you, one would require complex auxiliary structures to be able to index, specially index all the objects in the scene. It should be noticed that it's not always possible to order 3D objects in a scene. For example, if we look at simply the three triangles that we see here, you can see that these are cyclically overlapping each other. So it means that if you would like to decide that triangle black is before the purple one, which is before the green one, it's impossible because we have a cyclus. So in that case, if you want to solve that, it means that doing the, uh, we cannot simply do sorting based on the object, but we need to do sorting based on uh, parts of the objects that are visible. But we are lucky because for terrains, the problem is highly simplified. And it's highly simplified because the terrain is a two and a half D surface, and we can therefore convert the problem to a two dimensional one. So it means that we can, from a given viewpoint, we can easily obtain and order all the objects. In our case, they are triangles or the cells of uh, or in a raster. So we can easily obtain and order all these cells along a line. And furthermore, we can exploit the connectivity and the adjacency between the 2D cells. So if we store our tin into a suitable data structure, then we can easily use adjacency and incidence to be able to navigate from one triangle to the other one. And if we do the same operation in a raster, then we obtain that this topological relationship for free. It's simply a matter of checking who is a neighbor of what. Now let's look at algorithms to perform line of sight and view sheds on grids. When we perform visibility queries in grids, we usually assume that one cell, because it's rather small, usually the resolution of a, of a cell would be something like a meter or 10 meters. So because it's fairly small, we, you, we usually assume that one can see a cell, so a cell is visible if its center is visible. So we don't need to go and verify that the whole cell is visible if we want to know if the cell is visible or not. If we start with the line of sight, then uh, there are several ways to do it. So I will explain now a few alternatives that are possible. First of all, if we want to perform the uh, line of sight query between two points, so here between the point V and the point, the point V is the viewpoint, and then another point, the point U, then what we first need to do is we first need to uh, draw the line and then project it to 2D in the grid. Now the next step would be we would need to basically build the profile of the terrain along, along the vertical projection of that line. So one way to do this is explained here is to basically calculate the intersection between every edges of the green and of the grid and the uh, line VQ that has been projected to the 2D plane. So that would be one uh, alternative to do that. And we could do that by linearly interpolating along each edge of the uh, cells to perform that. But that would be very slow in practice and would involve a lot of computations. And since we assume that we have a lot of cells and these cells are fairly fall num a very low number, there is no need to do that. So a better alternative is to use a rasterization algorithm. So to start between V and Q, and simply rasterize uh, this line. Uh, one example of an algorithm to do that is the Bayes and Ham's uh, line algorithm, uh, but there are others. So basically, we simply need to rasterize uh, the line to find which uh, cell of the grid will approximate as best as possible the line. And after that, you can reconstruct the profile by simply taking the center of every cell and then project it uh, on the line as it's shown here. And then the idea is basically to simply start at V and then move to the first uh, center, the first center that was projected on the line. So you need to move at that position. And then you can uh, interpolate linearly between V and Q, their height or their elevation, I'm sorry. Uh, and then you verify whether that elevation is higher than the elevation of the center. If, it is, if it's not, then you can continue. Uh, and in the case here, you see that if you visit one, two, three, four, and then at the fourth cell, then you can see that the elevation of the terrain would be higher than the line uh, VQ. Then you can stop, and then you can uh, state that uh, the point Q is not visible from the point V.
Now let's discuss the computation of a view shared from a single point of view V. As can be seen here, when we compute the view shed, we usually give a maximum radius, for example, 5,000 or 10,000 meters for the horizon. One way to calculate the view shed would be to calculate the line of sight, as we've just seen, for every pixel in that 5,000 meter radius. Calculating the view shed with such an algorithm is called brute force and it will also create a lot of uh, redundant computations that is for the same pixel we will visit the same pixel many times to calculate the line of sight for other points and uh, therefore we will be making way too many computations that might you might think that it doesn't really matter but if you just think about it for the ahn3 data set for example the 50 centimeter resolution that is uh, that can be obtained from the dutch government um, if you simply assign a 5 kilometer radius, then that would mean that you need to do roughly 400 million queries, so 400 million times the line of sight uh, computation. It's possible, but probably that would be taking a lot of time. So an alternative solution, and that's the one that's uh, shown in the slide here uh, on the right, it's called the tangent method. Uh, the tangent method basically means that you don't visit every pixel, but you will simply sample pixels that are on the boundary of your uh, of your radius. So you would basically pick all the uh, cells that are on the radius, and then you perform not the line of sight, but you perform a modified version of the line of sight algorithm, as we've just seen, between V and each of these points. So if we look at one point, what's important to notice is that you need to perform a line of sight, but not the traditional line of sight as we've seen, because uh, it's possible that along the line between V and a given point, you have pixels that are not visible, then are visible, and are not visible. So the algorithm shouldn't stop as soon as it finds a part that is not visible or as soon as there's an intersection. It's very much possible that uh, because of a house, you cannot see on the other side of a house, but if there's a mountain that's uh, two or three kilometers away, you would see that mountain while you cannot see behind the house. So the idea is basically to start at a, the point V and then navigate with the same idea. So you can just rasterize your line and project all the centers. Uh, and then you navigate along this line or you walk along that line and then you keep a tangent. And the tangent is basically what can be seen or the highest point that can be seen so far. And then based on this tangent, you can simply decide if something is visible. Uh, if it's under the tangent, it's not. If it's above the tangent, then uh, it is. And if something is not visible, then you would simply update the tangent as you walk based on the local elevation. So the idea is basically simply to start at V, then walk along every center and keep the tangent up to date and then decide for every pixel if these pixels are valid, if they're, if they're visible or not. <laughs>